What is up everyone and welcome back to my channel. Um, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different today. I'm going to take a look at TOPS 2020 Series 2 and analyzing the rookie checklist um, to see which players we should be investing in and which players we should be keeping an eye on. Um, obviously, Luis Robert is a su potential superstar that's been driving this product. Um, however, there is um, so va some value to be had with um, Series 2 and some of the lesser known rookies. Um, so hopefully we can find a diamond in the rough. Um, there are a couple guys that I think are sleepers and um, are being overlooked um, by the hobby and just baseball fans in general. Um, so uh, there is some value to be had with Series 2. Obviously, it's not going to be as deep as um, 2020 Series 1 or even um, most um, series in recent memory. Uh, however, there is some value to be had in these players in series two. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, I'll be mentioning my top five hitters and my top five pitchers uh, from top series two in this video. So let's hop right into the honorable mentions. Um, the first honorable mention we have is Domingo Leyba. He is an infielder for the Arizona Diamondbacks. Um, he came over to the D-backs a couple years ago in the Didi Gregorius trade. Um, he didn't really hit for much power in the minor leagues. Um, but this past season, he hit 19 home runs in AAA. Um, however, he was suspended for 80 games for PEDs. Um, so how much of a power surge this past season was because of that, I don't know. Um, he'll be a guy to keep an eye on in 2021, as he'll be obviously suspended for this season. Um, but if he does continue to hit for power next year, he is a guy to potentially invest in and keep an eye on. Um, and he is the D-backs number 30 prospect. Next up, we've got Willie Castro of the Detroit Tigers. He is their number six prospect in a pretty deep farm system. Um, however, he is more of a, an average hitter, um, more contact over power. Um, and again, we want to invest in guys who hit for power, hit a lot of home runs. Um, and on top of that, what's even better is if they can hit for power and have speed and have um, good contact skills. Um, so really, we want five tool players. However, uh, Castro really doesn't hit for power at all. Um, same with the next guy, Danny Mendick. Um, he is the White Sox number uh, 19 prospect. Um, however, he is kind of average all across the board. Uh, doesn't do one thing exceptionally well. Um, he's a solid in all areas, um, but isn't really an elite player. Um, so I wouldn't invest in him either. The next guy is Yu Chang. Um, his natural position is a shortstop, um, and his second position is third base. Um, but obviously, the Indians have Francisco Lindor at short and Jose Ramirez at third. Um, so it doesn't seem like Yu Chang will get a ton of opportunities anytime soon. So I won't really touch him at all. Um, he is their number 21 prospect. Next up, we've got Jonathan Daza of the Colorado Rockies. Um, again, I wouldn't really invest in him. He's their number 11 prospect but he's more of a contact hitter and speed guy and more of a fourth outfielder. Um, and then Garrett Stubbs, the final guy on this honorable mention, is the Astros' number 23 prospect. He's a catcher. Um, however, he is a more contact over power guy again um, and is a speedy catcher. So let's get into the top five. At, checking in at number five is Shogo Akiyama of the Cincinnati Reds. So he's an outfielder that signed for $21 million this past offseason out of Japan. Um, in Japan, he won two gold gloves and is a five-time All-Star. Um, and he set the league record for hits in a season. Um, and one really impressive thing about him is that he's very durable and played every game of their 143-game season for the past five years. And he's currently projected as the Reds' leadoff hitter. Um, and so he's got a real opportunity with the Reds um, to showcase his skills. So as you can see on the bottom of the screen, I've created an index for each player. Um, I've basically ranked each hitter and pitcher on some skills, um, and then eventually coming up with a number, um, ranking them on uh, if they're a strong buy, a buy, an interesting player to watch for, um, a neutral guy, I'm not buying or selling, um, or just a guy to ignore. Um, so based on all of these attributes, I think 
Shogo Akiyama is going to be around a 270 hitter. Um, isn't going to hit for a ton of power, probably around 10 to 15 home runs. Um, he might steal you 10 bases, um, but he does play in a small market with the Cincinnati Reds. Um, and they're kind of a contending team, kind of a borderline team. Um, so he grades out to a neutral rating. Um, I'm not really buying him. I'm not really selling him either. But I have his cards. Um, however, I do think uh, he has potential to grow. Um, he is 32 years old um, because he did come over from Japan, played a couple of years professionally there. Um, so he's kind of on the older side, and I wouldn't necessarily uh, be jumping at the bit to invest in him right now. Um, but again, he'll be batting leadoff for the Reds um, and starting in center field most likely. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. Checking in at number four, we've got Jake Fraley of the Seattle Mariners. I think this guy's been very overlooked. Um, he's not the biggest guy. He's six foot, um, 195. Uh, he was drafted by the Tampa Bay Rays in the com competitive balance B round in 2016 out of LSU um, and was traded to the Mariners in the Mike Zanino trade. Um, Fraley is currently the Mariners' number nine prospect. And he quietly had a good season in the minors. Um, he was hurt for part of the season, but managed to hit 298 with 19 homers, 80 RBIs, and 22 steals, put up a near 2020 season in the minors. Um, and he really hit for a lot more power this season. Um, and I think it is sustainable. Um, however, he needs to stay healthy. Um, he's had some injuries in his career and uh, had a brief stint in the major leagues. Um, cut short because of a thumb injury um, where he only got to play about 10 games and then was out for the season. So he's really got to stay healthy, but I think he can translate what he did in the minor leagues this year to the major league level. Um, I think he could top out at about like a 270, 280 hitter um, with 20, 20 potential, 20 homers and 20 steals. However, he does play in Seattle, which is kind of a smaller market um, in terms of viewership. Um, and the Mariners just aren't going to be that good this year. Um, so he does grade out to an interesting rating. He's a guy who, if you check out his numbers and highlights and you like him, um, go ahead and buy him. Um, he is an interesting player. Uh, however, I do worry about next season um, with top prospects, Jared Kelnick and Julio Rodriguez most likely reaching the major leagues. Um, by next season, Fraley could be out of a job in the outfield. Um, as Kelnick and Rodriguez will go along with Kyle Lewis, um, former first round pick for the Mariners and was a rookie card in series one. Um, so I think Fraley long-term, um, we'll see, he might need to get traded to a different team to um, have a sustainable opportunity in the majors. But he is an interesting guy to keep an eye on with 2020 potential. Checking in at number three, we've got Sheldon Noisy of the Oakland Athletics. Uh, he's an interesting guy, um, interesting build. He's six foot, 232, um, and plays infield. He can play second base, third base, and shortstop, um, and even play a little bit of outfield. Um, and then in college, he even was a relief pitcher for a bit. Um, he struggled in 2018, but hit for more power and average in 2019 and struck out less and walked more, which is always a good sign. Um, he hit 317 with 27 homers and 102 RBIs in AAA last year. Um, however, he did play in a very hitter-friendly park in Las Vegas. Um, and also, there's been rumors that the AAA baseballs were juiced last year, um, leading to more power numbers. However, the numbers he put up are nothing to sneeze at. Um, you've still got to be a good hitter to hit home runs and put up those types of numbers. So I think in the majors, he could top out at about a 250 hitter with 25 homers. Um, with an upside of maybe hitting 30 homers every year. Um, again, when we invest in players, we want power hitters. And if he can sustain about a 250 average while hitting 25 to 30 home runs, um, he could be a decent guy to keep an eye on uh, for the Oakland A's. He's not the fastest guy, so he won't steal bases. Um, and he plays in a small market with the Oakland Athletics. Uh, they've got to share the Bay Area with the San Francisco Giants and the A's being a um, not the biggest spender um, kind of hurts in terms of their market size. 
Um, however, I do expect the A's to contend for the playoffs and potentially win the division um, with all their talented pitching. And they've got some good hitting with Chapman and Lariano and Olsen. Um, so I think Noisy has a chance to contribute. And I grade him out as an interesting rating, um, someone that I might go out and pick up right now because um, I think he's going to be a pretty good power hitter in the majors. Um, number two, we've got Edwin Rios of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, I think this guy is a massive sleeper. Um, he's a Dodgers number 18 prospect. He is kind of on the older side. He's 26 years old, um, sixth round pick in 2015. But he had a really good year in the minor leagues. He hit 270 with 31 homers and 91 RBIs. Um, and then he even came up to the majors and hit 277 with four homers and eight RBIs. His four home runs came in only 47 major league at-bats, um, so very efficient. I think he's got potential for um, big things, hitting some big homers for the Dodgers, uh, obviously a big market team. Um, however, playing time is going to be hard for him to find um, with Mookie Betts in the mix now. Uh, obviously, they've got Bellinger in center and Betts in right and Jock Peterson in left. So we'll see where Rios fits in. Um, what's good about him is that he can play multiple positions, so he can play third, first, and outfield. Um, so I think he has the bat to force his way into the lineup and get some playing time this season. Uh, and I think he's got 30 homer potential in the majors while hitting about 270. Um, plays for a large market again in L.A., and the Dodgers are a World Series contending team. So he could play a decent role for them this coming season. Um, and in the future. So I have Edwin Rios as a sl massive sleeper and a buy right now. Checking in at number one, I think everyone knows who it is, is Luis Robert. He is the super potential superstar that's been driving Topps 2020 Series 2. Uh, he's Major League Baseball's number three overall prospect, and he's a White Sox number one prospect. He signed out of Cuba for $26 million in 2017. He's a really good all-around player. Um, with five total potential, and I think he's got superstar upside. Um, I think he's going to be the next big guy in the card collecting um, universe. Um, he's going to be Ronald Acuna Jr. level and potentially even reach Mike Trout level. Um, guys, look at the numbers he put up in the minor leagues this year. He had 328, or this past year, he had 328 with 32 homers and 92 RBIs with 36 steals, had a 30 30 year. Um, he's only 22 years old, and he's got massive potential. Um, if you look at his ratings down there, he's basically got fives all across the board. Uh, the one thing I knocked him on was um, his team. The White Sox aren't the strongest team right now, but they're definitely headed in the right direction. They signed Yasmani Grandal in the offseason. Uh, I've got Jose Abreu and Eloy Jimenez, who I think is going to have an even better breakout year um, this coming season. And he's going to be a future superstar as well, um, alongside Luis Robert. And they've got Andrew Vaughn and uh, Nick Madrigal coming up the minor leagues. They signed Dallas Keuchel. So I think the White Sox are really going to be a good team, a team to watch for. I think that contention rating of three uh, could be bumped up to a four um, this season as the season gets going. Uh, and eventually the White Sox, I think, are going to be a World Series contending team with all that young talent. Uh, ready to come up and contribute in the major leagues. Um, so keep an eye on Luis Robert. His cars are ranging from $15 to $20 raw right now. Um, I think he's going to be a future superstar. So for me, that's even relatively cheap. Um, I would go out and pick up some of his cards, get him graded, because um, I think he's got Ronald Acuna Jr. Um, level talent and potential. Uh, Acuna, granted, did it at a younger age, but Robert is still, regardless, a superstar potential player and is a strong buy, in my opinion. Um, obviously, if you're buying Series 2, you're hunting for Luis Robert's base card, as well as his short print, um, super short print, and then even his no-name plate, um, super, super short print. Um, so these cards are going crazy right now, uh, and I think there's a ton of room to grow. And I think he's going to be the next Ronald Acuna Jr. of this hobby. So go out and get Luis Robert right now before he shoots up to superstar level this season. 
Uh, so let's move on into pitchers. Um, pitchers aren't a huge area um, that I'd focus investing in. Um, however, I will mention a few names um, with these pitchers. Uh, honorable mentions, there, there's TJ Zoic of the Toronto Blue Jays as uh, a six seven righty. Um, he threw a no-hitter in AAA Buffalo, so he's definitely got um, good stuff. Um, but I don't know if there's a rotation spot for him right now. Uh, so he's a guy to keep an eye on. Um, same with Junior Fernandez, not a ton of room in the Cardinals rotation. Uh, he's got an electric fastball, but I think he's going to end up in the bullpen. So checking out number five in their top five pitchers for Series 2. We've got Logan Webb of the San Francisco Giants. Um, he's a Giants number 11 prospect. Um, sandwiched right in between um, guys from 2020 Series 1, Mauricio Dubon and Jalen Davis. Um, he was a fourth round pick in 2014. Uh, he's had Tommy John surgery before in the minor leagues and has also been suspended 80 games um, in prior seasons. Um, however, he did have a good year in the minors this year. Um, he had a 185 ERA uh, and even came up to the major leagues and got eight starts. In fact, he allowed two runs or less in four of his eight starts. Um, so he's been kind of inconsistent, but in his good games, he's been very good, um, including a game where I think he pitched six shutout innings against the Braves um, in that impressive lineup. He's got a low 90s fastball and a uh, pretty good slider. Um, so I think he's going to be a back of the rotation uh, type of player. Not huge strikeouts, um, not a major market. Uh, and the Giants aren't a great team right now. So um, he's kind of been relegated to the low level of interesting player. I wouldn't necessarily go out and buy him right now, but um, he is a decent player. So moving on to number four, we've got a combination of two players. Um, we've got James Karinchak and Emmanuel Class A of the Cleveland Indians. Uh, these two are some electric bullpen arms. Um, they're both ranked number 14 and 15, respectively, in the Indians' top 30 prospect list. Karen Chuck was a ninth-round pick in 2017, while Class A signed for $125,000 in 2015 with the San Diego Padres, eventually made his way over to the Texas Rangers, and then was traded to the Indians in the Delino de Shields and Corey Kluber trade. Uh, so let's talk about Karen Chuck first. He has some insane strikeout numbers. Um, if you look here, uh, this past season in the minor leagues, he struck out 74 batters in 30 and a third innings. Guys, that's more than two batters struck out per inning, um, which is absolutely insane. He's got a really deceptive, de deceptive delivery, um, got a high 90s fastball and a nasty breaking ball. Um, and again, his strikeout numbers are just off the charts. Um, even in the majors, he struck out eight hitters and five and a third innings in his brief stint uh, last year. And I think he's got closer potential, uh, big time strikeout numbers. Um, and those are some numbers that you, you wanna see. And so when you invest in, relievers aren't the biggest um, investment players, but I think Karen Chak has a chance to step up and maybe replace Brad Hand if they ever trade him um, as the Indians closer. Um, moving on to Emmanuel Class A. Uh, he came over from the um, Texas Rangers on the Corey Kluber trade. Um, his fastball is absolutely electric, um, 97 miles per hour to, to 100 miles per hour. And he has even touched 102 miles per hour um, before as well. His fastball is some good cut and he's got um, a very good slider as well. Um, but it's mainly his fastball and the movement he gets on it and the velocity. Um, to just blow batters away. So he's got some pretty good strikeout numbers as well um, and put up some solid numbers in the major leagues last year also in his brief stint. Um, he suspended 80 games, so I don't believe he'll be playing this season, uh, but he is an electric arm to watch for alongside James Karinchak um, in Cleveland. So they've definitely got a bright future in their bullpen with these two arms. Checking in at number three, We've got Kwang Hyung Kim of the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, he signed this past offseason in December for $8 million out of Korea. He's a left-handed pitcher. He's a starter. Um, his fastball is in the low 90s from 90 to 93. Um, he's got his best pitch as a slider, um, which is a very good pitch. It's a pitch that 
you can add to and subtract from, uh, much like Patrick Corbin does with his slider. Um, and I think he's kind of a, an overlooked guy, really good international signing by the Cardinals. Um, he's also got an average curveball and a forkball as well. Uh, put up amazing numbers in Japan, uh, in Japan. And then even this year in spring training in the brief innings that he did have, in the eight innings he had, he didn't allow a single run and struck out 11 batters while only walking one. So I think he's got a chance to get in as a Cardinals number five starter. Um, and I've actually grown to mid middle of the rotation role. He's got good control. Um, isn't going to strike out a ton of batters, but he is decent. Um, Cardinals are in a medium market, and they'll be a contending team, um, contending for the playoffs. So Cam, in my opinion, is an interesting player to keep an eye on. Um, people have compared him to Patrick Corbin um, with the upside, and potentially even comparing him to um, – Hinjin Ryu, um, fellow Korean pitcher. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. At number two, we've got Bruce Dark Ratterall of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, he is Major League Baseball's number 83 overall prospect and the Dodgers' number five prospect. Um, he was originally supposed to go to the Red Sox in the Mookie Betts trade, um, but a couple of physicals um, failed. And um, in fact, they were worried about Ratterall's arm um, so the trade didn't go through, um, and he ended up going to the Dodgers and the Kenta Maeda trade. Uh, he was a starter, um, but ended up um, being converted as a reliever by the Twins. Um, he averages 99 miles per hour out of a bullpen and is topped out at 102 miles an hour with, a, with his fastball, which has good sink. He's got a good slider and an okay curveball. Um, but again, durability is a question. Um, he's had Tommy John before, and... Um, has had some arm injuries on top of that. Um, so we'll see. Um, he put up really good numbers in the minors last year. And with Kenley Jansen um, and his heart condition potentially opting out of um, the 2020 season, we could see Grouderall step in alongside Pedro Baez um, to be the Dodgers closer. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. Um, he scored a buy rating. Um, I think mostly because of the fact that he plays with the Dodgers. Um, so I kind of bumped him down to number two. Um, he has the highest rating among the pitchers because of the team he plays for. Um, however, I think he ranks as a number two guy, um, pitching-wise, to invest in. And finally, at number one, we've got Justin Dunn of the Seattle Mariners. Um, he's a guy that's been overlooked. Um, he's the Mariners' number seven prospect. Fastball system, low 90s, can touch 95. Got a good slider, um, an okay curve, um, and a developing changeup that I think could be a decent pitch. Um, he could be a solid middle of the rotation guy. Um, however, he does play in Seattle where um, they'll be struggling this year. Uh, but in the future, next year, I think they'll be pretty good. And Dunn will be part of that uh, pitching rotation that looks to turn things around in Seattle. Um, he came over in the Jared Kelnick and Edwin Diaz, Robinson Cano trade, and I think he's got potential to uh, be a strong pitcher for the Mariners in the future. So in review, um, these are the top five players, period, that I would invest in in Tops 2020 Series 2. Um, at number five, just explained Justin Dunn, uh, pitcher for the Mariners. Um, Jake Fraley at number four, potential 2020 hitter, um, very overlooked. Um, at number three, we've got Sheldon Noisy, um, power hitter for the A's infielder. Um, I think he's got potential to hit anywhere from 25 to 30 homers on majors. Um, and then we've got Edwin Rios at number two of the Dodgers, a guy that I think has been very overlooked um, and is very underrated. Um, and I think he's a guy that you can go on by right now. And um, I think he's going to contribute in the major leagues to the Dodgers right now. Um, this season, um, his bat will force his way into the lineup, um, and I, I think he's he's got some potential there with the Dodgers. Um, and then finally at number one, obviously, we've got Luis Robert, who I think is going to reach Ronald Acuna Jr. levels um, in a year or two, and he's really just a tremendous superstar to keep an eye on. So I hope this helped you guys out um, evaluating all of the rookies in Series 2. Um, at first glance, you kind of see Luis Robert and see no one else. 
but after some deep digging, um, it looks like there's actually a decent list of some guys that are intriguing and um, guys to invest in. So I hope this helped you guys out. Um, let me know in the comments below who you um, are surprised by and who you would invest in now after watching this video. Um, so yeah, let me know and I'll be coming out with a new video soon. Thanks.